Hello, you're one and only Shinfit here, and you're number one source for aerial footage and gameplay. Let's go in an in depth look at the fighter planes. For your information, you need to click on the plane icon shown on the spawn screen to be able to customize your plane. Let's start with the dogfight loadout. The name says it all. It specializes in taking down enemy planes with high rate of fire heavy machine gun. The heavy machine gun is meant to wreck enemy planes as well as fighters. I feel like the machine gun isn't as powerful to take out wings and make the enemy una plane unable to perform maneuvers. But since the fighter plane is so agile, you give yourself angles to let your bullets really do work for an easy disable. When it comes to killing infantry, it's much harder than an attack plane of course, but it isn't bad either. You just have to practice precision of your aim, I recommend to hit the brakes while you strafe to give yourself more time to kill. Since the game don't have RPGs, thank god, you don't have to worry about the infantry making your strafe risky. As I said before, this is the ultimate killing machine in the air, but it have a counter, the bomber plane. This agile dogfight loadout fighter plane is weak against bombers. If a bomber gunner knows what he's doing, there is no point to try to take out the bomber. It takes a very long time to kill, probably two whole rounds into the back of the bomber, making it impossible for it if it have great defense. The dogfight loader is also equipped with emergency repair. When you press 3, if you have default key bindings, making you gain 30 health or so immediately, plus repairing damaging wings in the process, which also helps in a dogfight or quick recovery while the AA is shooting at you. I recommend that if you face an AA or if you're in a dogfight, always be ready to press the emergency repair tool. When I get shoot, shot at, uh, if an enemy plane is behind me, I always tend to have one finger ready for emergency repair. This saves me a lot. Let's move forward to the bomber killer loadout. This is probably the best loadout for the fighter plane in general. It is equipped with a TUF heavy machine gun, which is more powerful than any other loadout cannon but lower rate of fire. I feel like this cannon is the same when it comes to kill infantry, but better versus light armor enemy planes. The cannon isn't what makes this loadout stand out from the others. It's of course the rockets, the ultimate bomber destroyer. It takes around 4 to 5 rockets to kill a bomber plane, which makes this loadout a nightmare for enemy bombers. But how about ground units? Well, since I'm new to the fighter planes, I have a hard time killing infantry, but it feels like you need at least 2 to uh, 4 rockets to kill someone which makes it harder to kill multiple infantry in one strafe, if they aren't at the same area. But let's be friendly, the fighter plane isn't meant to go for ground targets, it's, it's not this loadout at least. Now to the last one, the trench fighter loadout. Equipped with the same machine gun as the dogfighting loadout, it also supports you to kill ground units easier. With the explosive darts, it and yes, you can kill or at least disable bombers with this. It's really funny, but let's get serious again. It shatters enemy infantry, but has a very low splash damage, so you need to be accurate. Probably the hardest, let's say, bombs to master. I had a really hard time getting infantry, actually. You really need to be on point to get the kill. But what I like the most about this loadout is the third equipment, the spotting flare. It's useful in different ways. Of course, if you go for a strafe, you can right after it shoot out the flares and see how many targets are within the area you strafed. But my favorite is actually spotting enemy planes behind you. As you can see here, I got an enemy fighter behind me on my 6. I shoot out spotting flare to see the enemy plane's movement for a short period of time on the minimap, making it much easier to perform counter maneuvers. Since it's just when the enemy planes is over the sparring flares, it may still be an important second between life and death depending on how good he is. This guy is probably a bad example, but the point I want to make is that sparring flare is not only useful on the ground, but also in the air. Try to dogfight within the flares area. As a bonus clip, many of you guys have asked me how the speed control in this game works. Uh, Battlefield 1 is not like Battlefield 4 and 3 when it comes to speed control. There isn't any perfect turning speed in this game but you can make your turn worse than normal ones. Here I tap the speed boost for, a f for the fighter plane. As you can see, I turn exactly like normal radius, but I hit the ground instead, which leads to the fact that with the speed boost, your turn will get longer. This is normal without braking or speeding, but let's try to slow down. Let let's try to brake when we go down and see if we get tighter turns.
Same results. Your turn gets longer, so, it, so in conclusion, the best way to turn fast is never to break or speed up. This is not only for the fighter plane, happens exactly the same with a type plane. The only way you can make a different versus worse pilots is your rudder movements. I highly recommend that you use the rudders whenever you perform a turn. This gives you a bit tighter turns in my experience and also gives you angles on your opponent. To use rudders, you either hold down D or A depending on your on left or right turn, and this is default key bindings. For right turn, you hold down D, and for left, you hold down A. That's it for today's tutorial. I really hope I answered some of your questions regarding the fighter plane and speed control in Battlefield 1. As you can see now on the screen, I have two other tutorials. One is basic attack plane tutorial on the left, and to the right, it's my key bindings and how I manage to fly like I do in my gameplays. Leaving a like and a comment is highly appreciated and motivate me to do more of these tutorials. Or even subscribe if you like more of the content. This is your Fisk, your number one source for aerial gameplay content. I'll see you in the next video.